What's going on, everyone? So Nikola Vucevic is officially an unrestricted free agent, and he very likely could re-sign with the Chicago Bulls. But there is a lot of talks about the Chicago Bulls uh, potentially going a different direction. Uh, there's rumors that they might just hit the reset button and maybe trade and get rid of a lot of their guys, or they might try to retool and kind of restructure their roster. Uh, something that I thought that they should have done in the trade deadline. I really did. I really thought Chicago was going to make those adjustments, but they ultimately didn't. It ended up pretty badly. Uh, and now they're kind of stuck trying to figure out uh, what they're going to do in this off season. Now, Vu is coming off of a four-year, $100 million contract. He very well may be looking for something like that uh, because he is coming off of a really good year. I mean, he is one of the better centers in the league front to back, and he's coming off of a great uh, year this year for the Chicago Bulls. I mean, this is a guy that was 20 and 12 for a good chunk of his career. Uh, he's like 17 and 11 for his career numbers, but he had like a seven year stretch where he was just incredible, right? Uh, he's very, he's been very consistent the last two seasons and he's durable. He played 82 games this year and started all 82. Uh, the year before that, he played 73 games and started all 73 games there. Uh, this season, he shot 52% from the field in total, 35% from three uh, on uh, four and a half attempts per game, which is massive, and shot 60% from the field, uh, which again, is, is really good. Uh, he gave you 17 and a half, uh, almost 18 points with 11 rebounds. He's also a great passer at, uh, at 3.2 assists per game this year. And he's a big, solid, burly type center. He also had a, a, a 109.7 uh, defensive rating this year. League average is 115. So this is a guy that is legit two-way type of center. He's 32 years old, so he's an experienced vet. He's still got a couple years, uh, I believe, uh, that he can still be one of the better centers. Uh, just the his game, his abilities, uh, the way that he kind of operates. He's a three-level type center scorer, right? Because he can back to the basket, get to the rim. Uh, he's a guy that can knock down the mid-range. He's a guy that can hit the three-point shot. Uh, again, great passer, willing passer. And it's going to be interesting to see what Chicago does because Chicago is kind of in this like purgatory right now, especially with the new CBA. The new CBA really hinders a lot of teams, and it it's going to hinder a lot of players, period. You're going to see a lot of players that would have gotten – 25 million a year that are going to get like 20 million or maybe even 15 million. I think the days of like those like overpaying guys or like those middle tier contracts, those like 17 to like 22 million dollar contracts, I think those days are going to be gone. It might not happen this off season, but I think as the years go on, those are going to become more and more likely because the problem is is you don't want to hit that second apron. So teams are either A going to say, "Okay, you're a max guy, you're worth 25, 30 million, or B, you're not, and I need to round out a roster, so I can't give you 20 million that you're asking for, so we're going to give you 15, or we're going to give you 12. So it's going to be interesting to see what Vu's market looks like, and if Chicago's willing to pony up in order to keep him. If not, I think he would be great for the Lakers. Now, the problem is a couple things. One is... He's an unrestricted free agent. So if you were to work out a trade, then you're going to hard cap yourself. And personally, I don't think the Lakers will hard cap themselves unless it's for Kyrie Irving. Now, not saying that that means they'll get Kyrie. I'm just saying, like, if they're going to hard cap themselves, probably something like that. However, uh, depending on what Vu's contract is, if you can get him for, say, 15 to 17 million a year, um, Hard capping yourself for that is a lot different than hard capping yourself for a 30 to $36 million max for Kyrie Irving. Big differences there, right? And you could even maybe work out and orchestrate uh, multiple trades. Maybe you could get a Vu and like an Alex Caruso or maybe a Vu and a DeMar DeRozan. Maybe all three if they're really having a fire sale. 
right? And, you know, you're trying to get the Mar, maybe they want, you know, the 17th and the, the um, 29th pick. Maybe you can kind of go, well, hey, we'll sign and trade Vu to us and we'll give you that, right? And now you kind of round out that roster. The other alternative is the Lakers signing him outright. Now, there's a couple approaches that the Lakers could go. It's just very complicated. Now, first off, the Lakers could, depending on how they go about things, and also depending on what Austin Reeves and Rui's contracts are, um, but very likely they could have their full mid-level exception, which is just under like $12 million. So if his contract offers are like four years you know, 60 million, he's getting like 15 million annually. Would he be willing to take, you know, a two million or two, three million dollar discount to go play with the Lakers, be the starting center for the Lakers, and contend for an NBA championship? Because I mean, if you think about it, how many teams need a starting center? Like contending teams, right? How many contending teams need a 32 year old starting center? Right? Not very many, if at all. Most of them already have that. Uh, so that becomes the, the thing. Like, what does the market look like? What is his, what is the, the demand? And if it's not heavy, can the Lakers kind of get that steal for like, hey, this is a guy that would be otherwise 20 million. We can get him for 12. Uh, the other alternative is that the Lakers basically kind of renounce, basically get rid of Mo Bamba, Malik Beasley, D'Angelo Russell, which there are already talks and rumors about um, Beasley and Mo Bamba being the odd men out and that the Lakers kind of let them go. The Lakers can get to around $14 million in cap space. Does that is that something that they look to do? And if they do, do they want to get multiple pieces or do they want to spend the whole thing to go get a Vucevic? Now, granted, you'd have like, granted, you'd have LeBron James, Anthony Davis, Vu, Rui, Austin Reeves, Jared Vanderbilt, so uh, Max Christie, and you'd still have your 17th pick, right? So, like, you'd have a nice little core of players. Um, what else can you get? What other contracts can you work out? That's a real question. Now, if it was me, I would try to get like a full fledged, almost blockbuster trade if possible, right? Tell Chicago, like, hey, you're losing Vu regardless. We want DeMar DeRozan. You're going to lose Vu regardless. Wouldn't you like to get something for him, right? And let's work something out. Depending on how much D'Angelo Russell, his contract is, you could get to the money that, again, assuming that Vu takes like say 15 to 17 million, right? That would put them around like 40 to 44 million. So D'Lo, if he's making, let's say 25 million between him, uh, Malik Beasley, you could throw in Mo Bamba if you had to and kind of go, hey, well, you know, we'll give you these guys. We'll take these guys and we'll also give you some picks and some assets, right? Uh it could kind of be the the chips that fall, or maybe you get Alex Caruso. Maybe you get all three. That would be a little challenging, but it's not impossible. Um, you know, it gives you some flexibility, gives you some things to work with. Uh, and I do like the idea. I mean, Vu and Anthony Davis as a, as your front court, I think would be really good. Again, with his passing ability, his ability to stretch the floor, uh, his size, his length, he's not going to get bullied. We could use him against the Nikola Jokic and the Joel Embiid's of the world, right? You got a big, sturdy, solid type center uh, that you can really kind of, um, you know, just throw at those guys. Uh, he had a solid defensive season. Uh, it gives you another, you know, 15 to 20 point a game scorer, a guy that you could dump the ball down to, a guy you can run your offense through at times. I like it. I like the idea. Also, he helps with rebounding. I mean, Anthony Davis led the, the playoffs in rebounds, and you'd be adding another 12, 11 to 12 rebound a game guy. Like, that's good, right? The Lakers would probably be one of the best defensive teams, have the offense, and be a great rebounding team. Can't really go wrong there. Um, you know, again, this is just kind of a thought. I'm just throwing stuff out there. Um, but I do like the idea. If you could get him, again, I don't know what the likelihood is, 
But if you could find a way to get him, that would be awesome. Like, I wouldn't mind it at all if they went and got him. I just, I don't know. Would the Lakers be willing to hard cap themselves in order to do so? Maybe. Again, there's a big difference between hard capping yourself for a, thir- you know, 30, 36 million and hard capping yourself for, you know, 16 million. And, you know, you'd also have to basically renounce everybody. Again, there's a lot of factors that go into it, but I think it could work. And Chicago, if Chicago lets him go, I don't know what his market's going to look like. You know, how much money is our team's going to throw at him? And the only mo- the only teams that really have money are like rebuilding tanking teams. So does he want to go to one of those teams or does he want to contend? If he wants to contend, I mean, the Lakers could use a starting center, right? I mean, Anthony Davis, I think still should be our starting center, but he doesn't really want to play center. And I don't think it would hurt to have another center. Um, So I do. I mean, I think it comes down to to Vu. What does Vu want? Is that something he'd be interested in? If it is, then sign him up, figure it out. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion, so I pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? Would you be all for him? Would you not? Is he a guy that you, you'd sign on? Would you be willing to, to work out a trade? Maybe, Like I said, maybe you do Vu and Caruso, or maybe Vu and DeMar, or maybe you try to get all three somehow. You know, there's there's options. There's flexibility there. So, anyway, again, however you feel, whatever your thoughts are, let me know down in the